Now, Web 1.0 started in 1989 and it's still relevant today. And the focus was around a read-only web. Now, according to Naratam04, who seems like a pretty smart guy, he states that websites were informational and contained only static content that was hyperlinked together. And it's true, that era demanded web designers. Web 2.0 was formed in the late 2004, and the focus was around user applications and user-generated content that encouraged engagement on platforms. So we see companies like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and even services like Airbnb, and also your beloved Figma pop up. These companies needed a special type of designer, product designers, which are also sometimes referred to as UX designers. Then we have Web 3.0, but um, we'll get to that in another video. Believe it or not, there is actually a sizable difference between what web designers and what product designers are expected to do. So we're gonna cover in this video, the differences between websites and web apps, the different responsibilities, the tools and the processes, job opportunities, and in the end, the ultimate potential of the two different paths. Now, the real difference between web designers and product designers. This is a website. This is a web app. What's the difference? This little button right here. To really understand the differences between a web designer and a product designer starts with the understanding of the types of mediums that we work in. Now, according to Essential Design, websites are a one-way informational feeds. They do not allow viewers to interact or communicate back to the website. Now, web applications are websites with functionality and interactive elements. So Gmail, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and the list goes on are all web apps that are dynamic and built for user engagement. Now on the surface, it might seem like it's a small nuance, but you might be surprised by how different the two processes are and the opportunities that they provide. So let's dive in. Now, when it comes to designing a website, the process is quite linear. Now, obviously there are cases when they're more complex, they're more advanced, and they're more... Wow. But it generally looks a little something like this. So you'll have a client that comes to you and says, we have an objective. We then have a scope to define the scope of work. We then create some site maps and some wireframes. We then design the website and then we have to build it and then we launch it. Now throughout that process, the web designer is responsible for the visual branding and the creative direction, the content and the information architecture, the conversion rate optimization, and nowadays some of them are also responsible for building the website with these no-code apps. Now it's also important to understand that web designers generally work in a more waterfall and linear process. Now when it comes to designing products, the process can be a little bit more complicated just from the nature of what we are trying to achieve. And it looks a little something like this. So first we need to decide, is it a new product, new feature, or a new iteration? We then define the scope of what we're gonna work on. We then have the sitemap and wireframes similar to the web designer. We then have to design the UI. We then normally have to test the design because building web applications is much more complex than a standalone website. We then build it, we launch it, and most importantly, we then track and iterate. So whenever we launch out a new feature, we always have to test and track how users are actually using it and making sure we are hitting the goals and objectives of what the entire project was about. Now, throughout that process, product designers are responsible for the content and information architecture, the UI design. We also have to build out design systems that can be utilized by other designers, we are then also focused around acquisition, so conversion rate optimization, user retention, and also thinking about how we optimize for churn, user testing and iterating, and at the end, we also have to do a lot of user research. Now, since product designers tend to work in more agile environments, the process is much more lean and their team dynamics are much more rigorous. When it comes to tools, they're fairly similar, but over the last couple of years, the rise in no-code tools has contributed into a wider disparity between the two skill sets. So web designers who are focused around building and designing these websites, they focus around project management, so they use tools like Trello and Asana. 
In terms of designing, very similar to UI designers and product designers, Figma, Sketch, and Adobe XD. In terms of design handover, they use Zeppelin. Now, if you haven't heard of Zeppelin before, I'm sure you've seen in this cute yellow hot air balloon around. Zeppelin is the industry's leading design delivery tool. Zeppelin will save you a ton of time organizing your design files and handing them off to developers. If you want to learn more about them, link is in the description and they also happen to be the sponsor of this video. And as I mentioned before, some web designers are now building their own designs. They use no-code tools like Webflow and Framer. And when it comes to tracking analytics, they use Google Analytics and also Hotjar. Now in terms of product designers for project management, they use Trello, Asana, Jira for more agile projects. In terms of design, we use Figma, Sketch, and Adobe XD. In terms of design handover, Zeppelin is a very popular one as well. Analytics, Google Analytics, Hotjar, Full Story, Mixpanel, and also Amplitude. And in terms of user research, there is Dovetail as well. Job opportunities. Believe it or not, web designers and product designers tend to gravitate to different types of roles. Now, not to say a product designer can't do what a web designer does or vice versa, because plenty of designers have overlapping skills. However, when you are more of a junior designer, it's a little easier to jump between the two because as long as you can get the job done, you're in a sweet spot. But as you start to take on more senior roles, the expectation increases relatively and the delta between what you know and what is expected starts to really matter. So let's dive into LinkedIn and just take a quick look at the different types of companies that web designers and product designers tend to work for. Now on the left hand side, you can see we have companies like Dovetail, which is a web app to help you manage a large scale user research projects. We also have RG Digital, which is a startup based in Sydney. You also have Microsoft that manages a bunch of different apps from mobile to desktop. You have Safety Culture, which is once again another uh, well-funded startup in Sydney and they do uh, web applications. We then also have Canva, which is a startup once again that many of you guys will probably know where you can design in an online space. Now, most of these job roles would generally demand the designer, the product designer, to have experience in UI design, design systems, uh, user testing, user research, and like they say, always driving the needle for the company, which means hitting objectives and helping push metrics for the organization. So these are the skill sets and the requirements when it becomes for product designers. Now, on the other hand, if you take a look at web design roles, they normally are sometimes associated to more digital design and also graphic designers. But you can see that the different types of companies, you see less of these startups and web application or mobile application driven companies and more around agencies. Now, as you can see, Sydney Festival is actually just a festival that's in Sydney um, and they organize all these nice outdoor events. So they need graphic designers and they generally will also start doing a bit of web design as well. You have Yogurt Digital, which is an agency in Sydney and they're looking for a UX UI web designer. Um, you have senior graphic designer roles. If I scroll further down, you can see that Dovetail, even though that, that they have a web app, they do have a digital slash web designer role because they want more creative designers to focus more on the customer facing website pages. Um, if you scroll further down, we might see a few more. So Spacey Studios, I believe they would be a, yep, once again, a digital marketing and agency type of uh, organization. So you can see that it's generally the freelancers, the agencies, and sometimes startups might have a digital designer and a web designer to focus on the, more of the creative side of things to help uh, bring web pages and other areas of their business where they require a little bit more of a creative flair. Now, as you can see, product designers are heavily geared towards product companies and web designers tend to work in a mix of agency. Now, the ultimate potential. What does potential mean? More money, more pool tables, and, but just to make it easier, let's just define potential as which one pays more because who doesn't want to make more money? Big bank, small bank, I like to make money. All right. Now, if I was to make this video maybe five years ago, my answer would be so different. With the knowledge you have now, why do you think that? Now, here's how I see the potential for both web and product designers. Let's remember the rise of no code is unlocking the next stage of opportunities for web designers. Web designers job doesn't end in a design app anymore. We have apps designed by product designers such as Webflow and Framer. And this allows web designers to build websites with no code 
and Webflow promises logic coming soon, which means you can maybe even start building some functionality without any code. You also have Zapier to automate any tasks from your website. You have Airtable, that's a no-code tool to build databases. You also have Bubble to build full-scaled apps without any code. So ultimately, you can provide a lot more value as a web designer nowadays. Now on the other end of the spectrum, as tech companies continue to innovate, take bigger risks and push the boundaries, great product designers are needed to solve these core problems. As a product designer, our job doesn't end in the design app anymore either. We have user research, we have product strategy, we have growth hacking, we have product management. There are so many things that we need to tap into. Even workshop facilitation is a demand or is a requirement for product designers. This might not sound like a lot, but to do these very well requires a lot of business acumen, which actually takes a lot of experience. As I used to run my own design agency, we offered both web and product design services. I would say they were both valued fairly equally. Now, a website design that normally included branding as well would be around $50,000. On average, a product design project would be around $50,000 to $70,000. And if we were to do the whole package, branding, website, and product design, we build around $150,000. So in the end, I think it's important for you to understand what type of work you enjoy doing more. Do you thrive more in the freelancing agency type of environment where you help businesses and clients build their online brand and web presence through web design or getting into the details with product design where you will be challenged to help companies push the needle, drive higher engagement rates and work in cross-functional teams. Now, I do have a thought I want to leave with you. We covered web 1.0, 2.0, but we didn't really talk about 3.0. And if you've been living under a rock, web 3.0 is an idea that explores the concept of decentralization on the web. So what type of designer do you think is needed for this new era that's forming online? Is it a web designer, product designer, a web product designer, a three web designer? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button and subscribe. I'll see you guys in another video very soon.